your year of breaking limit? Then what eyes have not seen or ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations. Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. So just keep saying it. You may be eating your mouth now. Just wherever you catch up with other people, just make sure when they are saying it, just open your mouth anyhow. And they will be feeling it gradually. Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome you this morning to this first Sunday service in the year 2020. And I trust God that as we start this journey together, we shall conclude the years gloriously in the name of Jesus. By the time this year is ending, you will still be found in the sanctuary. Gloriously are done with great testimonies of breaking limits in the name of Jesus. Let me welcome your neighbor again to your left, to your right. Tell him or her, you are welcome to this great year. Our breaking limit year. Neighbor, you are looking fresh. I can see breaking limit in your face. Everything is already breaking limit. Your cheeks are breaking limit. Your smile is breaking limit. Come and give him a shout. Just as it has been declared, our prophetic theme for the month of January is prayer and fasting. Gateway to breaking limits. Prayer and fasting. Gateway to breaking limits. And beginning from this Sunday, we are going to be looking all through this month, we are looking at the teaching subject. That is entitled Engaging the Power of Prayer and Fasting for Supernatural Breakthrough. Engaging the Power of Prayer and Fasting for Supernatural Breakthrough. We are looking at part 1A in this first service. Hallelujah. I'd like to begin by saying Reminding us that we are in the last days. The great day of the church. The great day. We are great things. Notable signs and wonders. Ear thinking testimonies shall be the portion of the church of Jesus. We are in the last day. The day of his power. Where the enemies of the church shall be cheaply subdued. And God's people shall be conspicuously reigning. It is the season of the reigning of the church. And when we talk about the church, we are talking about the individuals. The church is not a building. It is the people that make up the church. And that, of course, connotes you and me. Praise the name of the Lord. In Joel chapter 2 and verses 28 to 30. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon thy servant and upon the handmaid in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders. In the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillar or smoke. Hallelujah. I will pour out my spirit. Power. And then that will culminate into wonders. Strange acts. Get set. Everything about your life will be a wonder this year. That amen is not strong enough. Everything about your family will be a wonder this year. Hallelujah. Will be a wonder. That is to say, everything concerning you will be breaking limits this year. When the days of his power, the days of his power, the days of his power, the days of his power. Psalm 110 and verses 1 to 3. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies thy stool 
fools too. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. In the day of thy power. This is the days where we are in. It takes power for motion. It takes power for reigning. It takes power to take your rightful position in God. And this is the day we are in. The day of his power. The people must be willing. The day of his power. Everything submits to power. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus went into the wilderness and he came back with power and his fame spread. Praise the name of the Lord. That was the son of God himself. He needed power in order to make any mark. If Jesus needed this power, then why do you think you and I will not need it much more? Power. Why do we need this power? Why do we need this power? Number one, because there are the, there are the horns of the Gentiles that are all out to stop and truncate the plan of God for our lives. The horns of the Gentiles. Zechariah chapter 1 and verses 18 to 20. Zechariah chapter 1 and verses 18 to 20. Then lifted I up my eyes, and I saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. They have a scattering ministry to scatter people's destiny. To scatter people, people's great destinies. Verse 19. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And then said I, what come these to do? And he said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to free them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horns over the land of Judah, to scatter it. Just scattering and scattering. Scattered it so much that no person can lift up their head. Such kinds of horns are operating in some families. You see children, great potentials, but nobody can lift up their head. Anytime anybody in that family is trying to lift their head, they bring it down. Either through sickness, through frustration, through something. And then you see everybody roaming around the same point. Praise the name of the Lord. Roaming around the same point. Yet with great potential. With great certificates. Good certificates. Intelligent. But ca cannot get anywhere. Because some satanic horns are just there. Scattering anything that God wants to put in place. But this year, they must bow in the name of Jesus. Every satanic manipulation that is trying to scatter your destiny. This month they shall be scattered in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear a loud amen. I didn't hear a loud amen. You have tangible projects and then you are working hard just to gather resources and finances. You are working hard and working hard. And at a point, one strange sickness will just come or one strange challenge will just come that will sweep away that money again. And then you start from square one. And it has been like that years after years. Years after years. So you are just stagnated. But I speak by the spirit of God. Every of such spirit shall be scattered this year in the name of Jesus. Ah, you need this power. So it is not a month to play with. No. It's not a month to play. It's a month to face your destiny. I'm not going to go rig my role again. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. You started a project now almost 10 years. No headway. 
No headway. Not that you are not getting some money in, but so many devourers, 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 devourers. Enough is enough. Everything trying to scatter your destiny. They shall be shattered this month in the name of Jesus. Why do you need power? Number two, to root out and pull down, to plant and build, to establish certain things in your life, to root out, to pull down, and to build. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdom to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. Hallelujah. You need power to establish, to remove certain things away from your life, to enforce certain things. You need power. You need power. You need power. To decree a thing, to, be, to get it established, you need power. You need power. You need power. Anything that God has not planted in your life this month, by the power of God, they shall be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why do you need power? Number three, for attraction. For attraction. Luke chapter 4 and verses 14 to 16. Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 16. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out the fame of him all through the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his customer was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood for to read attraction. His fame went out. You have been hidden for long. Your business has been hidden for long. That family has been hidden for long. But the good news is this year, you shall be announced in the name of Jesus. The stone that was hit at all rejected is becoming the head of the corner this year for you in the name of Jesus. For attraction. For attraction. Oh, watch it. Some of you, before this year is over, you will step into nations you have never taught in your life. You will sit with people you have never taught for good in your life. I thought that amen can be louder. I truly thought you believe it with a shout of Amen. Attraction, 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 attraction. Ha. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you better look at me very well. Though. And because before this year is over, you may need to feel form to see me. Before this year is over, neighbor, you will hear my name. Hallelujah. You are becoming, it takes power to become an attraction. Power. Power, power. Don't, don't play down on that business. It may look small now, but before the end of this year, it's going to be reckoned with in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Attraction. Why do you need power? You need power to subdue the enemies. To subdue the enemies. Psalm 66 and verse 3, the Bible says, Say unto them, How terrible art thou in thy works? Through the greatness of your power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. You have fought all manners of challenges in the previous years. But I tell you something, by the power of God that you are contacting these 21 days, all the enemies around your life, they will submit themselves to you. They will submit themselves to you. It takes power to subdue the enemy. Not by power, not by your own power, not by your by spirit or by your you know, not by your might or your power, but by his spirit. It's not by strength. For by strength shall no man prevail. No. It's not by bold face. It is by the spirit of God. The spirit of God. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. All those who say you won't marry, ah, they are coming to submit themselves to you this year. Submit themselves. Submit themselves. Hallelujah. Just like Pharaoh said, go, 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 go. All those who have said you won't go, ha, they will go for you this year. 
Number five. Why do you need power? To destroy every limitations of life. To destroy every limitations of life. <laughs> when the power of God is at work in your life, whatever it is that is standing as disadvantage becomes an advantage. Limitations. When the power of God is at work, God will blind people's eyes. They never see your witness. What strength did Sarah have? I mean, did uh, Esther have? Nothing. She had the limitations. Several limitations. Joseph had several limitations. David had several limitations. He wasn't qualified for that position of the armor bearer. But the moment Saul saw him, he loved him. He didn't look for qualification. There are some certain positions that you will occupy this year that they won't need your qualification. No, you didn't believe it. If you believe it, your amen will be louder. Even when people go behind and say, ah, this man we just gave that position, he didn't have this certificate. Oh, he said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Along the way, he will, he will learn it. He will learn it. He will learn it. That is power. When power is speaking, every limitation is irrelevant. Praise the name of the Lord. They say, you know, this position, we don't give a young man like this. They say, that's not a problem. He will grow into it. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in this company, until you have spent 10 work, you know, you have 10 years minimum working experience. The man just came two years ago. No problem. It's good. It's good. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how you'll be breaking limits this year. I said that's how you'll be breaking limits this year. Power. 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 So you will need this power. We need this power. And one major spiritual access to this power is fasting and prayers. Fasting and prayers. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. The Bible says, Is this not the fast which I have chosen? To lose the bounds of wickedness. To undo the heavy bodies. To let the oppressed go free. And to break every yoke. Power. Power is contacted through prayer and fasting. Praise the name of the Lord. Power is contacted. You need this empowerment first. And then every other thing follows. Praise the name of the Lord. Empowerment, 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 empowerment. Jesus was empowered when he went to the wilderness to pray and fast. 40 days, Luke chapter 4. He went to the wilderness to pray. He returned with power. Psalm 63 and verse 1 to 3. To pray and fasting. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 3. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. Fasting. My soul thirsted for thee. Prayers. My flesh longed for thee. Fasting. For one purpose. To see your power and your glory. To see your power. Lord, I want to experience your power in my life this year. I want to experience your power in my life this year. Hallelujah. That's what you should focus. Your power in every area in my life this year. When the power of God is at work in your life, every other thing will follow. Every other thing will follow. Your power, your glory. When power comes, glory will manifest. When power comes, glory will manifest. This empowerment comes by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Don't sell away your destiny. We are all starting on the fresh page this year. Don't let your stomach be your God. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't let your stomach be your God. Everybody is setting his destiny now. Don't be left out. Prayer and fasting. There is no any shortcuts. Every valuable thing in life.
carries a cost. You must pay the price to carry the price ultimately. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Don't let food, food destroy your future, your glorious future. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Don't say the way my body is, you know. You know, fasting doesn't really, it doesn't go with my body. I don't know, the two does not agree. It must agree this year. <laughs> Anyhow, it must agree. It must agree. Why is it that it's only food that agree with your body? It must agree. A whole, a whole adult. A whole adult. 11 o'clock, your eyes is bringing tears. Because you have not eaten. When your children are fasting. KHMS students, our children, is, they fast. They fast. They fast. And when they fast, they come to pray. Real prayer. Not this one, because you are fasting, to open your mouth is, is a problem. They say pray, you stand. You never do. <laughs> Wait Maybe they won't make person fall down. If I fall down, they will now know. They say pray, pray hard. Pray hard. Come open my mouth. You see small, small children, they are praying. Praying, praying. You now walking and praying and praying and seriously. And then you see adults, because you are fasting now, it looks as if they have put the whole world on you. Even to move is a problem. It's my year of breaking limit. Thank you. Now my body won't break now. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Anyhow, you, this one, you will do this one. Because we must hear your testimony this year. In the name of Jesus, you must pay the price to carry the power. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why we are setting the stage. Setting the stage. We are setting the stage for a glorious year. Certain things will happen in your life. This year, a testimony that will get you stunned. That he, you will only be shedding tears. You will lack the words to describe the goodness of God. Get you stop. Get you stop. This is when to set the stage. This is when to set the stage. It when the days of God's power. But power is contacted through prayer and fasting. Power is contacted through prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Power is contacted through prayer and fasting. What is fasting? What is fasting? Fasting is a conscious, intentional decision. You have to take it. To abstain for a specific time from the pleasure of eating in order to gain vital spiritual benefits. Fasting is a conscious, intentional decision to abstain from the pleasure of eating in order to gain vital spiritual benefits. So you know what you are going for. You are not just fasting without a purpose. No. You have targets. You have spiritual targets. And then you intentionally and consciously decide to abstain from the pleasure of eating. So stop doing it as if it's compulsion. When you begin to see it as compulsion, you lose the blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. Let it be a personal decision. And then you walk everything around it and you don't tempt yourself. I don't know why, not that you are fasting and then your kitchen is open. And then as they are trying to prepare some things for children, then the aroma is oozing out and then you go to sit down, you know, and then you are sieving everything off. 
Before you know, you stand up. You say, I hope you put, you didn't put too much salt. Because you know, you know, salt is not too good. Are you sure? You say, yes, ma. Say, okay, are you sure? Let me see. Let me taste it. You taste the first one. Like, How many spoons did you put? Okay. It tastes this portion. By the time you taste, you have tasted half. You say the mother will go feed child, they go taste them first. Praise the name of the Lord. Make up your mind that this time it is you and God. Praise the name of the Lord. It is you and God. You must have spiritual goals. You must have spiritual targets. So that you are not just fasting for nothing. So that you are not just fasting without a focus. What are the benefits of fasting and prayer? That you must target, number one. Number one, it provokes outbreak of revelations. Isaiah chapter 58 and verses 8 and 10. Isaiah 58, 8 and 10. Outbreak of revelations. Then shall your light break forth as the morning. Light. Towards certain issues of your life. Expect light. Expect revelations. Expect God to give you light. Expect light to break forth. Revelation on what to do. Light. Fasting. Ushers you to new light. Number two, it, en it, it enhances our level of spiritual authority. It enhances our spiritual level of spiritual authority. How? By increasing our spiritual capacity. It takes increased capacity for increased authority. So it enhances our level of spiritual authority. That is the things that you have run away before from. It will be the one running away from you now. You will take authority. It enforces, enhances your spiritual authority to be able to take charge. And that comes by increasing your spiritual capacity. That's what fasting and prayer does. It increases your spiritual capacity. It increases your spiritual capacity, which is spiritual empowerment. It increases your zeal. It increases your, 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 you know, your spiritual agility. It destroys carnality in our lives and makes us spiritually sensitive. So fasting does not only change things, it changes people. So this coming 21 days, you must sit with God. Lord, I need a change in my life. Spiritual lifting, spiritual empowerment, this, you know, laxity in my prayer life. Lord, let it die. This, this lukewarmness to spiritual things in my life, enough is enough. Empower me, Lord. Empower me to be spiritually willing, to be spiritually aggressive. This one, you approach spiritual things like punishment. Come to church on Sunday, you must come late. And you want to go, you must be the first person to run out. They have not shared goodness, you're already by the roadside. Surely goodness and mercy done. Now the days of my life, I don't go. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm breaking limits. I don't know waiting to see, but I don't go. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord, empower me spiritually. Empower me spiritually. Every other social things is of interest to you. But when it comes to spiritual things, you don't have interest. How can you be in a commission like this? For two years, you are, two years, you are not in any unit. And it doesn't touch you. It, 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 it doesn't touch you. How can you be in a commission like this? You have not read at least one or two books. The announced books, you just look at it. A very good cover. I like this color. It is well packaged. They took time to package this book. Ah, oh, Papa. Papa can write. Oh. Papa, I hail you. Even when you buy the book, <laughs> you, end up, you end up using it for purse to put money inside. 
And they see the book with you and say, ah, this book, this is one of the new books. Yes, I just bought this. Please, can I read it? Can I? No, no problem. Read it. Read it. And five people have collected it and read it. You who bought it, you have not read more than introduction. Praise the name of the Lord. That is no flair for spiritual things. Spiritual things, low. You know, but social things, oh, you are there everywhere. Everywhere. Lord, empower me for spiritual empowerment. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. To facilitate fulfillment of prophecy. Every word of prophecy that can be declared, you war with it. You war with it. You war with it. You'll be given the prophetic pamphlet this morning. Do you used to war every item there? You wage war with it. Go to the website, you see some other prayer guidelines and all that. Download it. And then you are warning with it. Every little time you have, you are warning with the prophecy. In the name of Jesus. Strange lifting in the order of Joseph. For my life, for my family this year. Katusa, Erube, Gerada, Garoski, Takatara, Dusia, Rupaka. It's my year of release. No devil can hold me down. No devil can hold me down in my career. No devil will hold me down. Concerning my children, no way. You are warning with it. Praise the name of the Lord. War with prophecy. Hallelujah for the fulfillment of prophecy. And number three, four, deliverance from every reproach and evils, unwanted habits, addiction, certain addictions in your life. Some things you do, you don't want to do. But you are finding it a struggle. You wait war. The spirit of depth in my life, of borrowing, Katusha, I destroy you. That yoke is broken into kapuruse katakotusi takata. The spirit of pride that is making me lose precious people around me. Lord, destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Kekura kapara kotosisi. Anything that is affecting your destiny negatively, this is the time to destroy it. Is it drug addiction? Is it smoking, drinking? Fornication, adultery, lying, cheating, deceit, whatever it is. Lord, this thing wants to dream my destiny. Help me, Lord. Lord, I cause it to be destroyed. You wait on God for it. Take relevant books that will help you. As you are praying and fasting, you are reading. You are reason, using those scriptures to wage war. Ah, this 21 days is a serious time. Oh. Don't let no devil distract you. Don't let no devil distract you. It is you and God. But one thing I know, before the end of these 21 days, it will show that you have met with God. Did I hear a loud amen? amen? Hallelujah. And number five, to obtain divine direction. Look at those areas of your life that you just need a word from God. We're just starting the year. Is it concerning one area of business? You don't even know what to do. You don't know what step to take. You have tried so many things. And yet, it seems not to have worked. Lord, I don't want to do try and error in 2020. No! How many years will I be doing try and error? No, I must get it this year. Show me, Lord, the step to take. Lead me. Lead me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Psalm 16 and verse 11. He said, thou will show me the path of life. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Putting those things before God. You know what you are fasting for. You know what you are targeting. You are not just, just doing it as a religious exercise those days. When we are in the Orthodox Church, it's time for Lent. You know, remember Lent? Uh -huh. So you just, everybody must fast. Everybody must fast. Inside that fasting, <laughs> you will still be fighting. During the day, you will have beaten about five people and still thank God, Lord, thank you for strength. <laughs> and in the evening, you are going to take the communion. Then you line up very piously. And on the line to take the communion, in, in case you see, see somebody that 
insulted you yesterday, you didn't see to have beaten. You tell him, let me go and finish first. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know, just religious exercise. Get good understanding, give it favor. You know what it is that you're engaging. It's all about your destiny. You must break limits this year. Yeah. What has never happened in your family for good is beginning with you this year. Yeah. In that your place of work, what has never happened for good, it will begin from you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Can I hear a loud shout? Yeah. What is a profitable approach to fasting? To maximize your fasting, you must approach it well. You must understand how to get the best out of these 21 days. Profitable approach to fasting, number one. We must come confessing and forsaking our sins. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not answer my prayers. Psalm 59 and verse 1 to 2, God's hand is not shutting that he cannot save. His ears are not heavy that he cannot hear you. Why? But your iniquities have separated between you and God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. First and foremost, let's come with a heart of repentance. Come confessing and forsaking your sins. Whatever thing that has the impediment to stop answers to your prayers. These 21 days, start with it. Start with it. Lord, in this area, in this area, in this area, in this area, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm 66 and verse 18. So start. Confess. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. First John chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Confess and forsake your sins. Number two, refuse to be offended in God. Refuse to be, don't approach God again with offense. Say, oh God, ah, that's how I fasted last year. And then nothing happened. I've come again. If not because of the way the, this pastor is harassing us. I won't fast, but I just have come. No problem. To see what you will do again. If you approach God with offense, you have lost the blessings. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58 and verse 9. Then thy, thou shalt call and he will answer. If thou take away the midst of thee, the yoke, and putting off of the fingers and speaking vanity, speaking vanity, you are offended. When a man is offended, it will show him from his language. Matthew 11 and verse 6, that was what destroyed John the Baptist. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't be beheaded. Don't lose your blessings. For blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me, the only way you can be blessed is if you are not offended. Remove the offense. Remove the offense. Number three, engage your heart in seeking the Lord. Engage this fasting and prayer with your heart. Not with your head. With your heart. With your heart. Let your heart be there. Not haphazardly. Proverbs 16 and verse 1. The preparation of the heart is a man. But the answer cometh from the Lord. So let your heart be fully there. Let your heart be fully there. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 21. And their nobles shall be of themselves and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. I will cause him to draw near. He shall approach unto me. For who is he that approach and engage with his heart? That's the one God will answer. Approach this time with your heart. Be fully concentrated. Be fully concentrated. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. And you shall seek me and find me. How? If you will search for me with your whole heart, not have hazardly. With your whole heart. With your whole heart. Set aside some time. Don't let your business take everything of your time this time. Don't let some concern leave those concerns. Face God. Face God. Face God. Plan yourself very well. Let nothing disturb your time. Not that you are in church. Serious prayer is going on. Every two, two minutes you are going outside to make up. Hello? Hey, I did church. You know, say we did fast. Uh, so, uh, uh, okay, that customer, I don't come. How much you say one pay? 30,000. No, it's too small now. 
Make them 37. I they pray for, I they pray, I they come. I they come. If he give you 37, take it. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. When you shall engage with all your heart. With all your heart. Engage with all your heart. So that you can get all of God. Lastly, number four. Define your goals and your objectives. Define your goals. Define your goals and your objectives. Hallelujah. Mark 10, 47 to 48, when Jesus met Bartimaeus. And when he heard that it was Jesus, he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Many asked him to stop. And Jesus called him and said, what do you want? Don't just be fasting and praying for nothing. What is it that you want? What are the things you want? Before we start the fasting tomorrow, write them down. Write them down. Number one, number two, number three, number four. List them. You know where you are going. It takes definition to get your destination. Write them down. Hallelujah. Ezra chapter 8 and verses 21 to 23. Then I proclaim a fast there at the river of Ahava. And we might afflict themselves before our God to seek of him a right way us and for our little ones and all our substance they itemize what they want they wanted number one number two before the law to show all the right way for our little ones for ourselves they listed it please write your goals and objectives what are the things specifically you want god to do and when they are table before god you have a focus and then approach it Doggedly, and I'm too sure before the end of these 21 days, you will have a testimony to show. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. The communion we are taking today is for strength because the journey is long. No one will break down, no one will break down. In first Kings chapter 17, the angel brought food, the communion for Elisha. Elijah. And he took it and he went 40 days in the power of the spirit. No breaking down. By this communion your body system will never break down. Everything will normalize in the name of Jesus. This fasting will fatten your spirit man. It will fatten your body in the name of Jesus. As we take this communion today, plug yourself. Lord, supernatural strength. Strength in my spirit man. Strength in my body. Mental strength. And all through these 21 days, you'll be strong and strong in the name of Jesus. Just before we partake of the communion, we are here, you are not born again. You have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That is one thing you must do to make this 21 days journey profitable. Or else, it will just be hunger strike. So wherever you are, therefore, as I'm speaking now, you know you are not born again. You have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Please give me this opportunity to pray with you very quickly. And then Jesus will come into your life. And then you are starting this journey. For the empowerment by the communion that you have received. Thank him and thank him. Lord, as we join in these 21 days, I will not break down. Every of my sister shall favor me. Lift up your voice and thank him. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I decree supernatural strength for you. In the name of Jesus, none of your system shall malfunction. In the name of Jesus, I decree by this communion, you are receiving light from heaven. In the name of Jesus, by this communion, I command the spirit of supplication upon you. In the name of Jesus, all through this period, you will receive directions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, shout it louder. Amen. amen. Shout the loudest. Amen. amen. Put your hands. You are blessed. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It is my year of breaking limits. That is also my portion in Christ. Then what eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. The same 
shall be your portion. Congratulations. Amen and amen. God bless you. Shake two, three people as you go.